Yo guys, what is up and welcome to another video. In this one we're just going to be taking some parts out of a hoverboard and trying to get the motor to work without it being attached. So, well, that's the hoverboard there. I bought like five of them on eBay and none of them work so they're all getting recycled for parts but that's going to be in another video. Okay, so all these hoverboards, they all come apart from underneath, so there's loads of screws, you just got to try and take all the screws out. There might be one or two that are stuck, but it doesn't really matter if you break them off. <clears throat> so when you remove it, there's going to be all little wires like this attached, so just bear that in mind as you lift up the cover. Um, quite a lot of these, is like a little clip, you can probably see in the video. Um, these are quite easy to do, you can do them by hand or with a screwdriver, whichever is the easiest way. Obviously you don't want to damage them, because um, these might be parts that you want to reuse. So we'll just disconnect those two. So these two parts here, these are the charging port and the power button switch. Okay, just bear with me a second. Okay, now they're both removed, it's a little bit easier to get to it. So in here we've got a Bluetooth module and we've got a speaker. Right, so I've just got to find something to, to stop it rolling over. I can't use them because we need them. Uh, right, we'll use this old hard drive. There we go, perfect. Okay, so what other bits do we need? Well, we're not going to be reusing the um, the speed controller, which is all this part here, this main this main circuit board. Um, that does the speed control for both motors. Um, the reason we're not using that is because it's really hard to try and communicate with say something like an Arduino or just even using a variable resistor for it. Because um, it gets a signal from this part here, which is the balancing module. And it's a little bit complicated for what I want to do. So, as you can see, I've already disconnected some parts from where it was open before. And right, I'm just going to unscrew this part as well. This is a bit that we don't need. So, if you ever try and fix a hoverboard, um, apparently these things are the things that are most likely to break. So, say if it just turns in circles or that kind of thing, just switch this out. So, I can go in the rubbish pile. Okay, so the motor, as you can see, held on four volts, and the wires for the motor come through its shaft. Um, I've already disconnected these. So we've got a hole sensor, and we've got three wires for the motor for each of the three faces. So this is not a DC motor. I think it's a, well, I know it's a three phase busless motor. Um, anyway, right, so let's undo these. Sometimes these can be really, really tight. Like so tight that you almost break the Allen key when you take them off. Um, yeah, I've already loosened these ones off. Your best bet is to try and loosen all four of them. So say if there's one stuck, leave that one, move on to the next one. It's quite handy with these hoverboards. Um, if you want to make a robot or anything, you get an uh, identical pair of motors. And it's mostly the motherboard which breaks anyway, which is one of the parts that we're not going to be using. So you're pr pretty much guaranteed, well, pretty much guaranteed that the motors are going to be okay with these. They're quite heavy duty. And you get the four bolts, you get this bracket, which just holds it in place. And then you can remove the motor. Okay, so these motors, it's a wheel hub motor. So everything's built inside it. It's all built in there. This is a solid rubber tire, which can be cut off, but we're gonna be leaving it in place for what we wanna do. So the next thing we're gonna need is to find some kind of speed controller.
So for the speed controller, we have two options. We got option number one, which is this three phase hall sensored brushless mirror controller. It goes from 12 to 36 volts. And it doesn't have a heat sink, but I've got some to put on there. Which is just here. So I'm not sure how I'm going to fit it on yet. Um, I might end up drilling a couple of holes, well, not drilling a couple of holes in the heat sink and matching them up to a couple of these and then putting threads in these holes so I can screw it together. Okay, so that's option number one. And option number two is using an electric bike motor controller. This goes up to 350 watts. It's got three wires for the for the motors, and it's got a hall sensor connection. But there's lots of other things it has. It's got like a learning cable and some other switch wires. So this would probably be well, I don't know. It depends what you want to do really. Like say if you're just making a bike and you're only going to be using one motor and you want a speed control and you can have that running with a cable then something like this is probably best but for what I'm going to do it's going to be a robot and there's going to be four motors on it so I'm going to be using these to connect these up we need to have a power in plus and minus and then we've got three pins there for the motors also we got the whole sensor connection and this is like any sort of Arduino connection or microcontroller connection. Or even, you can't even use a potentiometer for this. But I want a radio control, so it's going to be connected to an Arduino. Okay, so what we need, we need the motor controller. No, we don't. We need the, we need the motor wires off the motherboard. And we need the whole sensor connection. So this is easy enough. So we got one wire for the motor. I'll just snip that off. If you're going to do this, make sure you disconnected the battery as well. Obviously for safety reasons. So that's one. Two. And obviously you want to cut these as close to the board as possible to give yourself as much wire as you can. Okay, so that's the three motor wires. And the whole sensor. Whole sensor is this one here. So again, cutting close to the motherboard. Right. Okay, so we've got whole sensor and we've got the motor connections. Um, for now, that's all we need of this. But there are loads of other connections. There's all these different kinds of plugs. These plugs, plugs for the Bluetooth. And then on the other side as well, we've got more whole sensor and motor cables, which can be cut off from here and then just pulled through. Um, so that's all we need for now, off there. So next part is to, to get this motor controller and to connect up these wires. Um, I've got a wiring diagram which I shall put up on the screen right now. So you can see which wires go where. Um, different coloured wires for the motor is pretty much universal, so they just go as motor 1, motor 2, motor 3, or motor A, B and C, and then hall sensor as well, pretty much self-explanatory. Okay, so... Okay, so we're just going to cut out all the bit of soldering nut. So you can see in this bit now, we've got uh, we've got the motor connectors soldered on, and we've got the hole sensors, and we've got some wires going to the Arduino. I apologise for the darkness. Um, but that'll have to do. It's, I mean, it's good enough. This isn't like a soldering video or anything. This is just showing you it working, and like showing you basic things how to do it. You know, if, if, if like people have any comments and stuff, um, so many comments that like people want to know a bit more detail on how to do this, then I'll make another video. But for now, this will be fine. Okay, so we've got an Arduino and I've loaded up some code into it. 
Again, if you want the code, make sure you comment on the video. Uh, just show a bit of interest and then, you know, I'll follow up with a more in-depth in guide on how to do it. So, just plugging in the Arduino. Right, I've already preset a code for this. So what's going to happen, the motor's going to speed up and then it's going to slow down and then it's going to change to a different direction. And then, I'll speed up and slow down again. So we're going to be looking at this motor here. Right, so this robot here, you can see I've got four motors on there already. Um, i got one speed controller. This, is, this isn't the one I just showed you, this one I, I made earlier. But yeah, I'm still waiting for two more to come in the post before I can start like making this radio control and driving around. So for now we're just going to connect it up. This is just a 14.4 volt, 14 volt drill battery. Um, I'm going to connect it up. You've got to make sure you don't get the wires the wrong way around because I think you can burn these things out. Okay, so take the positive to the positive and negative, black one to the negative. Okay, right, so now you can see the motor spinning. It's quite smooth. So this um, this program that I'm running is just a modified version of the the fade example program that you get in the Arduino um, IDE examples. So yeah, just kind of this is how you hack one of these motors. So it's not really it's not that complicated. All you need is an old broken hoverboard. Two of these. Two of these boards, um, they are cheap on eBay. I'll put a link in the description to one of them that I found. Um, yeah, you need an Arduino. Um, oh yeah, what I was saying about if you just want to use a potentiometer. Uh, what do we have? Where we've got jump, um, where we've got two wires coming from the Arduino to the microcontroller. One of them, I think, set in the direction which you can do with a switch. And the other one, uh, over here, that one is just sending a PWM, a PWM signal. <coughs> and inside the board, it's got a built-in digital to analog converter. So you don't have to worry about plugging one of them in between. Um, I know a few people have said about it, but this, my, this, um, this control has actually got one built in. I didn't realise until after I'd ordered my um, digital to analog converters. So this is it. I mean, you know, I'm not putting much force on it, and it is again only running at 14 volts when it's supposed to go up to 36. They have got a fair bit of power. So anyway. <coughs> That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And if you want to see more, don't forget to leave a comment and keep hassling me for more information about how to do this. And subscribe if you want to see the next video for when it's all up and running. Okay, that's it for now.